Welcome to the Becoming Aware podcast, where I, Genevieve Faulkner, share what I'm becoming aware of. Hello and welcome to the Becoming Aware podcast. My name is Genevieve Faulkner, your host, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about twin flames. So what are twin flames? Um, is it a real concept? How does it work? What are my, what are my takes on it? The reason why I want to talk about this is because I am someone that has been kind of like watching all of the cult documentaries that have been coming out um, over the last year or two. And I recently watched a couple about the Twin Flame universe, um, which is like a group on YouTube that has, they've kind of created a business around uh, the Twin Flame concept. And yet there was kind of like a lot of shady stuff going on within um, that organization and within like, you know, just the group that that is. And the thing that is kind of sad to me about that is that how cult type um, organizations work is they'll take something that is true and then they will twist it in lies and that's how they create the hooks. And so I think that for that to have been popular, you know, there's a lot of people that have had these kinds of experiences that, you know, make them think that they've got this twin flame. And so I just wanted to kind of like share what I know about it, um, just to hopefully contribute to anyone that is seeking information. Uh, so that, you know, you've just got that as a resource if you need it. So, um, what is a twin flame? So a twin flame is the concept of twin flame is basically where we've got, you know, like one being that has chosen to be here in two different bodies or more um, on this planet at the same time. And the idea is that they basically come together and, and merge um, and have this kind of like divine union when they've, when they've done the work to heal themselves and become whole within themselves. Now, does that, does that happen? Is that real? Is that true? Um, there's a few things I kind of want to like address with this. Um, so first of all, what will often happen with twin flames or people that think that they have a twin flame is they will meet each other and they'll have this extremely intense connection to the other person, you know, and we're talking like there may be like an intense sexual attraction but it's often an incredibly telepathic psychic connection also, and just this knowing of one another. And, um, you know, there can often be a lot of lightness um, connected to that. Yet what happens and um, when someone's kind of got wounding or they've got things that have not been addressed within their subconscious, whether that be their own wounding or their ancestors wounding, is that they will then create um, kind of like the anxious avoidant thing that I talked about in the previous podcast of this push and pull dynamic of, um, you know, wanting intimacy, but then pushing the other one away. Because here's the thing with a twin flame, it's kind of like you can't actually receive the other. Like if you have a part of you in another body, you can't fully receive that, that aspect of you if you have any judgment of yourself, if you don't like yourself, if you aren't completely adoring, loving, in allowance of every single part of you, there will be this attraction to the person, yet there will also be this intense need to repel them, okay? And so it creates, it can create quite a toxic bond. And I think that there are a lot of people that have these experiences that are incredibly intense with another and then they end up acting out this, this toxic type bond. Um, and it can be quite difficult to get over because in a sense, like when you've got like um, that kind of connection with someone, it, 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 because of everything that gets activated, it can kind of create like, you know, obsessive thoughts. It can create this intense psychic connection to the other person. Um, you can like, kind of like, you know, when you're, when you're, um, very much in communion with another to any degree, it's kind of like, you can hear what they're thinking. You can, um, 
sense it, you can feel them, you can, you know, even if they're across the world, you can sense what's going on in their body. Like it can be incredibly intense. You know where they are psychically, you know, like there's, there can be like so much, um, so much beyond this world that you can experience when you kind of like have that kind of intense connection. And so it can be incredibly difficult to kind of work through that. And so I think a lot of people kind of get lost and they can create all sorts of different points of view about what, what that um, connection is and what it means and what it's supposed to be. And sometimes that might then end up creating um, something less than what it could be or what it was originally created for. So I believe like, so first of all, do I believe in this, this um, construct or this concept? I think that you've got to look at it from different perspectives. And I think that like, I guess the answer is in a sense, yes and no. Like it's kind of like if you're functioning from oneness, like we are all connected, we are all one. It's kind of like um, everyone could be a twin flame. Do you know what I mean? We are all kind of like aspects of a whole being part of the energy of everything. Yet at the same time, I can see if you function from a different space or a different reality or a different paradigm, then yes, there can also be this concept of a twin flame where there is one being in two different bodies um, or maybe even more bodies than that. Um, why is that created and, and how does that work? So I'm going to put it in a way... Um, I guess that I've learned to kind of understand it through what it is that I've studied. Um, I've done a lot of training in theta healing and in theta healing, um, Viana Stibble, she talks about the universe in kind of like planes of existence. So she sees uh, kind of like the universe having these seven planes of existence. Now within those planes, there can be different dimensions, galaxies, like, uh, you know, it's like a, it's, it's a very multi-dimensional head trippy thing that is beyond the mind really to comprehend and I think that like you know with when anyone's explaining anything you've got to kind of take what is light from it and leave the rest um but like it is a great way of kind of explaining it so that you can your mind can get a sense of it so she talks about there being seven planes of existence the seventh plane is like very much kind of like um, just this pure energy of creation so it's just oneness it's like we are all connected like there is no plura polarity <clears throat> beneath that I won't go into all the planes but basically like we are kind of like functioning um, on one plane of existence which she kind of calls the third plane of existence yet there's also like um, the fourth and fifth plane and sixth plane but um, the fifth plane being kind of like ascended masters, angels, guides, you know, higher vibrational beings, all of that kind of thing. And I think that the twin flame concept, um, kind of connects to those vibrational frequencies, meaning that I think, I do believe that there are many of us that came here to this earth to assist to raise the vibration of the planet, to assist the earth to thrive. And I think that the way in which we kind of agreed to do that was to effectively do the work. So it's kind of like um, each of us, although we think a lot of the time we're choosing our reality, um, just, you know, we, we think that we're consciously choosing, yet a lot of the time we're not. And when we're not, what we're actually doing is allowing all that information that's within our DNA to create our reality for us. And then we often end up repeating a lot of patterns that we don't realize are there that our ancestors have lived out before. And so in a sense, I believe that there are many of us that have all sorts of incredible capacities that are beyond this world, that are quite magical, that haven't been acknowledged very much on this planet, um, that really came here to assist in changing this frequent, the frequency and the density that is here. And so the way in which we, I believe that some of us have done that is to be born into um, families that have had like a lot of um, 
like ancestral trauma, abuse, like all sorts of different limitations. And we did that because from that space of kind of like, or that dimension or that reality or galaxy where we were, where we kind of like knew how powerful we were, we knew uh, what we brought to the table and we knew like that we, you know, have the capacity to change worlds, change points of view, let go of anything, transmute energy, you know, all of these different things that we um, could break these ancestral patterns. We could change the DNA, all of that kind of stuff so that we could actually bring true choice to the people that were coming, that, that are on this planet. And we could get to a place of going beyond the um, cycle of trauma that then creates the exclusion of both other people and also um, the earth in our world. So I think that a lot of people that have this twin flame experience may have this connection to other places where they had all sorts of brilliant capacities. And I do believe that a lot of them have come here to contribute to ending these patterns. And so I believe that this twin flame concept was something that was created on this, you know, in these other dimensions or realities. And it was something that was agreed upon to experience so that kind of like um, each of us could kind of wake each other up, so to speak. So rather than it being on one hand, it's kind of like about, um, you know, fully, fully loving oneself or fully acknowledging oneself and being able to um, receive the other yet what if part of it is very much about doing the work within the DNA structure that we chose so in a sense it's kind of like if you were if you have a twin flame yeah you might be the same being or you may be one that is very dynamically similar but you have chosen different bodies and so in a sense you're not exactly the same because you've got your being which will be coming through, but you've also got all of that ancestral programming. And so you might be, you may recognize each other. You may like have this incredible connection um, and maybe a desire to be with one another. Yet, if you haven't addressed what's within that DNA and, and done the work to kind of shift and change it, that you agreed to come here and do, I think then... It doesn't go the way that you might fantasize it kind of like going, you know, it's kind of like you have to get to the place of shifting and changing that so that you can fully receive yourself beyond all of that. Because what tends to happen on this planet, although we have this, you know, ability to be incredibly aware, I think that a lot of us tend to forget what we actually are um, before we come here. And so when we come here, we forget, and then it's kind of like we can buy these programs in the DNA as us, and then we can end up acting them out. And so with this, um, with this whole concept, like people can get into, like part of this programming that I believe that a lot of twin flames came here to change is this codependent dynamic um, of um, kind of like focusing too much on the other or wanting to rescue or heal the other. And so what can happen with twin flames is it's like they'll they'll get locked in this kind of thing where it's like they, they you know, merge to a degree, have this awareness of one another, be incredibly connected, be very like able to psychically tap into one another, um, yet they can have this desire to heal the other because they want to be with the other. Um, and then they can go into thinking, you know, that the other is in resistance and um, they need to heal them so that they get out of resistance so that they can merge. And if that doesn't happen, then they will have failed the mission um, and, you know, they'll be a failure. Yet, what if that's not actually the mission? Okay, so... I think that there's all sorts of belief systems that have been created throughout time that have created false missions. Okay. So I believe that the mission, if you've got this twin flame thing going on is actually to do the work within yourself, 
to get to the place of fully receiving, being an allowance, accepting you, being with you without any judgment. And that's allowing yourself to change whatever is within your genetic structure in a way so that you don't have to live out those patterns and have true choice. And I think that when you do that, that actually becomes something that breaks those codependent patterns. And see, now what can happen? Um, so I've done like, you know, quite a few sessions with people with twin flame stuff going on. And I've had experiences for myself. And I think that what can occur sometimes is because there can be this idea that the other is a part of you. You know, people can get a little controlling and obsessive and feel like, um, you know, they don't need to respect the free will of the other and that they can kind of make the other change so that they can have this merging. And it, and, and it's, it really doesn't work. Like that's part of, in a sense, um, creating, functioning from the limitations of the DNA and not actually being the aware being that you actually are. So in a sense, it's kind of like, you know, people can get into this place of feeling like, um, you know, I'm do I've done all this work. Why aren't they wanting to be with me? Or why can't I connect to them? Why are they resisting the connection or, you know, all of that kind of thing? Um, well, yeah, you might have done the work. You may be able to receive them fully in love because you've be able to receive yourself. You might be able to just, you know, like have no separation at all. Yet, have they done the work? Is there something that they still need to complete? So it might be that they've got all sorts of DNA stuff that they took on that they need to shift and change within their world um, to, to kind of like receive the possibility of something with you. So in a sense, although there can be this romantic notion with Twin Flames, what if it's not really about romance? What if it's about creating the change on this planet um, and really getting to the place of being unstoppable within yourself, because in a sense, it's kind of like, it's funny because we, you know, so many people will think that it's about the merging, yet that creates a lot of the time this need to hold on to the person, which creates part of the codependency dynamic which is actually the thing that you might be here to change. So in a sense, rather than needing to heal the other and needing to get them to be on the journey with you and needing them to change, what if you are actually here to heal all of the stuff within you, within your genetic line, and then be the invitation for them to actually step into what it is that they came here to complete also? Because it's kind of like if you're willing to be that, so rather than putting your focus on them, like striving ahead, doing the work on yourself, it's kind of like then you be the space of being able to accept them and receive them where they're at. Because in a sense, when you have done all of the work on yourself, you won't be irritated or triggered by where they are sticking themselves. So it's this weird thing because because what will happen is sometimes there will be that dynamic of one kind of like maybe failing a little, um, you know, struggling, maybe they've got addiction stuff going on, maybe they've got trauma, you know, all of this kind of stuff going on. And they may not be shifting as fast as the other one knows that they could and that, you know, there's, there's this, this push and pull thing. Yet what if they're actually sticking themselves there to get you to actually um, break that codependent thing within your DNA so that then you propel yourself forward and it's only when you're willing to actually in a sense, leave them behind or let them have their journey with no point of view that then they can be inspired by what it is that you've stepped into because that is truly you loving yourself enough to not put the need of another above you. Maybe that is the thing that breaks them out of whatever it is that they are stuck in, okay? So it's kind of like there's this weird thing with these types of relationships that can be such a tug of war. 
And it's kind of like, unless you get to this space of allowance, I'm not going to change. But then this one will be like, unless you change, I'm not going to move forward, right? So it's it's this crazy kind of like deadlock. Um, and so the key, I believe, is actually to allow yourself to move forward, to heal within you, to to look at how is this person triggering me? What are they bringing up? What do I need to change within my DNA? What do I need to heal? What inspiration can I be for this person? And and to, to hold that space of knowing them from this other plane so that they can connect to the power of them if they need it, but not having any point of view about them coming on the particular journey that you're having because you've chosen the particular genetic makeup that you've chosen for a reason. That's where things shift and change. There can be this thing with, with um, twin flames where they can have this so we can have like all of these different obligations, contracts, oaths, vows from other other planes and realities where <clears throat> um, sometimes we can hold the belief that if one of us moves forward, the other one will um, suffer, so to speak. So it, so we can have these strange um, beliefs or, or things kind of like, I guess, implanted into our world where it's kind of like we're supposed to go together, right? Or if I leave them behind, they're going to die. If I leave them behind, you know, they will fall apart. Like all of these kinds of things. And so um, sometimes there may be healing work to be done to shift those belief systems because what will happen if you've got that stuff going on? It might be that you go to move forward and then it's kind of like the other person's world falls apart. Um, and in a sense, it might that might trigger you if you've got those programs, because you're supposed to go together, yet that's not actually true. Um, it's actually the willingness to allow their world to fall apart. That's part of the process to allow these, these codependent patterns to completely um, dismantle, right? Because it's kind of like you can't save them. They have to save themselves. They have to step into the knowing them, remembering them and changing what they came here to change. Because whatever it is that they are experiencing, whatever it is that you're experiencing, you've chosen it, you know, you've created it and you've created it for a reason. So in a sense, nothing is um, more powerful than you. Nothing can break you. Nothing can stop you if you acknowledge I've created this, so what is the gift of this? What am I trying to achieve? What am I trying to, to shift change? Um, you know, and and allow yourself to have the awareness and then kind of choose whatever you need to from that place. That's kind of what can create great openings into kind of like a new space of awareness and new, um, in a sense, like, new, like will allow you to claim new aspects of your being. So I don't know if I've just rambled for 23 minutes or whether that made sense, um, but I hope that it has contributed to those of you that are confused um, or struggling with this or just, you know, wanting to understand it a little more. Um, some of you may have the question kind of like, well, how can I move on when I can feel them so intensely? Um, and I get that, like, that's something that my clients will say to me sometimes, you know, it's like, it's all very well, like, you know, trying to just focus on me. But, you know, when you've got this intense in con connection, you can feel when somebody else is struggling. Um, in a sense, it's kind of like the part of the lesson or part of the experience maybe to get you to really step into the dominance within yourself to be kind of like, in a sense, unapologetically here. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like part of part of this whole experience. If you've grown up in a family where maybe you were taught to be less or you, it wasn't, it, you weren't allowed to be center stage. It had to be all about somebody else, like, which is often what creates that codependent type thing. Sometimes, you know, you'll have someone with a bit of a narcissistic type personality and they need everything to be all about themselves. Um, if you grew up with someone like that, you may have learned to kind of like, uh, kind of like water down your energy, so to speak, like not be as intensely here as other people. 
And that may have created you being very sensitive to different energies around you. And part of the, like, um, part of what it is that you kind of came here to change may actually be partially that. So in a sense, their energy may be showing up rather dynamically in your world and you may be aware of everything that's going on for them, but it's because it's it's kind of like the the test to get you to um, demand that you really be here and really acknowledge what is true for you and really step into your creative capacity and not let anybody else's energy influence you um, in a way that takes away your power. So if any of you are struggling with Twin Flame stuff, I do do sessions, um, you know, assisting people to shift the subconscious dynamics that's within their DNA that creates um, all that push and pull stuff and all of the all of the stuff that you don't want with a twin flame um, relationship. I also have a course called, uh, I have a soulmate course. I've forgotten what it's called right now, but that may also be a contribution to some of you also because there can be similar um, things at play with some soulmate relationships and twin flame relationships. So you can check that out if you need. Um, I don't want to like completely diminish the idea that, you know, there is divine union possible and that, you, you know, you can have a great relationship with your twin flame. I do think that like it is possible. And um, for some of you, like that may happen, but it's kind of like that is only possible when you detach from it being possible, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like if, you make that your target and and you're not willing to not have that. Um, that's where you kind of like take the choice out of their world and that's where it becomes um, something less than what may have been originally planned, right? So it's kind of like only when the both of you are willing to be the true power of you and acknowledgement of yourself in the bodies that you're in, that then that kind of like divine union can really work out. Because if you come together at a time that you do not have that, all you're going to do is create more of the kind of um, perpetration of the family programming, um, abuse patterns, um, rejection patterns that maybe you've already experienced in life. So there is very much a timing thing with these kinds of relationships. And so in a sense, for some of you, I hope, I hope that contributes because if you are holding on, it's kind of like, no, you can let go because if this is something that is going to contribute to both parties, you're not going to like not have it. It will be created at some point because you'll be a vibrational match and pull each other in. So it's not something that you need to hold on to. It's actually reclaiming and healing the parts of you that need to be healed and acknowledging the power that you have to change things within the DNA. That's that brings you more into the frequency that can uh, allow you to actually receive that in the physical world. Um, if any of you have any questions about Twin Flames, feel free to send me messages, uh, 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 leave comments below this podcast. Um, and yeah, if there's anything else that you would like me to do a podcast about, feel free to um, leave comments about that. Also, thank you so much for listening, guys. I hope this has contributed. Um, I'm not sure if I made any sense, but yeah. Till next time. See you later.